Now you are ready to auto-align your projectors. You can perform many of the automatic setup steps under normal room lighting, but for color matching, it's best to dim the room lighting. You should display a grid test pattern to confirm the initial image positioning. Select from the test pattern and display grid lines dropdowns on the lower left side of the Geometry Manager screen. The default setting is 11 by 11 for a grid of 10 by 10 blocks. The camera doesn't need these grids, but you'll find it useful for defining the edges of your mapped image during the initial setup. The grids will not line up perfectly and may appear to be curved or distorted. This is normal since the screen isn't flat. Now you're ready to run the ETCUK10 software. Click the Auto Adjust button on the upper right corner of the Geometry Manager screen. The Auto Screen Adjustment home screen will appear with five choices as shown. You can perform a prearranged combination of steps, or you can choose to perform these as separate procedures as desired. We'll select the first button, which will automatically perform geometry alignment, edge blending, and color matching. When you click any of the buttons for the first time, you will be prompted for the projector layout. A variety of setups are possible, but here we'll use a two projector wide scenario. The next menu screen will show you all projectors connected to your local network by name, IP address, and model number. All projectors to be adjusted should be automatically selected. Go to the next screen, where you will be prompted to number your projectors. The software will assign numbers to each projector in turn and display them on screen. As this happens, click on the corresponding position on the graphical user interface. On the next screen, you'll search for connected cameras. Hit the Search Camera button and your camera will show up in the list by ID and model. Make sure the box next to the camera is checked. Click to the next page, where you'll be prompted for black level settings. If you want the most accurate final results, have the camera make this adjustment. However, this requires a very dark viewing environment. If this is unavailable or impractical, click on Set Temporary Values which uses values that work well in most cases. The next page is for camera setup. Click on the Auto Setup button. The software will configure your camera and take a test shot, which will appear in the black window. This process takes less than 30 seconds. The test shot will show you if the camera is seeing all of the screen area. If it isn't, adjust the lens or move the camera back and take another test shot until you have the desired coverage. The next menu tells you that the automatic adjustment you chose will now start, using a default picture gamma of 2.2. Go to the next menu. Here you will see four cross cursors along with a screen type selection tab. Select the horizontal curve screen from this drop down and you'll see additional center cursors appear. You can add more cursors here as needed. The more cursors you use, the more accurately your image will be mapped. Positioning these cursors will affect the linearity of the final blend more than anything else. Get them right. The easiest method is to measure equal sections across the width of the screen and divide into those sections. If you measure out four equal sections, quarters, use five cursors and place the beginning and end ones at the physical boundaries of the screen and three remaining at the one quarter, one half, and three quarters positions along the top and bottom edge. Tape marks and a laser level are extremely helpful in setting the top, bottom, and sides of the projection surface, especially if it isn't within a frame. Use the mouse or the up, down, and left, right arrows to move the cursors to the corners, center, and top and bottom edges of the area to be mapped. You will see these cursors projected onto your mapped surface at the same time. When finished, don't be surprised if the position of the cursors on your computer screen doesn't match what you see on the map surface. After all, the on-screen menu is only 2D, but your map surface is 3D. Click the Edge Blending with Auto checkbox. Now we're ready to go! Click to the next window and start the auto adjustment. This will take a few minutes. The software will alternately display different test patterns, black, white, and color mosaics. You will also hear the camera's shutter as it takes several screenshots. When finished, 
you should see a blue screen image that conforms to the area you define with the cross cursors. This image will be edge blended and brightness levels should be consistent across the image. You can re-display the grid patterns to confirm. At this point, the software will display a window confirming a successful blend and provide you with the pixel overlap amount. This is an important number and will most likely be asked for by whoever is managing the content. It will also ask you to choose which memory slots in the projectors to use to store the corrected geometry data. There are three to choose from, and you can choose whichever you like. At this point, the software will begin the color matching process. Very little interaction will be necessary on your part, except to acknowledge certain conditions the software creates to maximize its effectiveness. After this process is complete, you will have the opportunity to do a before-after comparison with whatever content you choose. Horizontal color bars chosen from the test pattern menu work well here. After the three procedures are complete, if you aren't completely satisfied with the results, most often due to either not enough or improper positioning of the cursor points, simply press Auto Adjust again, and this time choose Readjust. This will remember all the initial settings and pause for 30 seconds at the cursor screen, giving you time to select Cancel. Select Cancel and you will see the previous cursor settings, which you can adjust as necessary by adding or removing cursors or repositioning them. If you opt to perform geometry alignment, edge blending, and color matching individually, you will perform all these same steps except that you will select the button for each of these adjustments from the home screen successively, rather than only clicking on the first button.